controller and issue numbers. Hey hey people, Five Aces here. If your memory is failing you, or if you have just started watching these casts right now, let me give you a quick reminder slash uh, in info about what's happening here. This is uh, part two in a best of five series between Happy and Juicebox. They are brothers in real life. I think Juicebox being the older one and Happy being the younger one. And they both are fighting for the hidden path to masters. And this is gonna be the best of five series that I've always wanted. Two of the most fierce and, and scary 1v1 players. Um, we're, they're back to their standard factions now. We're seeing Juicebox with the Russia pick in uh, and Happy with France. Okay, so Happy not going for Brits this time around. Interesting. Probably random allies. Let me see. Yeah, okay. He went for random allies and the other side. Yeah, Juicebox deliberately picked Russia. And um, as you can see in the scoreboard here, it's 2-0 for, for Happy so far, so uh, I'm, I'm not sure, maybe this is going to be a very short cast and a very short series, very short lift, but maybe it goes on to the fifth game. There is always potential for comebacks and Juicebox is not someone to count out or dismiss easily. So we're on Pit Fight, and one of those maps where it's like, do you even rush out an Engineer to contest the World Eric, or do you just let it go? Sometimes I do it like Elsa from, from the Frozen movies and I, I just let it go. Let it go, let it go. Grenadiers coming in. Yep, we're seeing some Grens. But there are there is defensive rifle infantry for Happy, so no dice. No dice, good sir. Both taking the Royal Derricks in relative peace. And the 1 nil for Juice Box in terms of kills. Good shit. Defensive infantry paying off there. Uh, the Grenadier is probably just going for a scouting run, maybe trying to snipe the power, but against someone like Happy, you're always, against the top tier player, you're always gonna expect uh, the other player to have queued up defensive structure or to have the APM and an uh, attention span to... Oh! They can kill a rocket soldier, that's pretty good! No? Ah, uh, running into the rifle there. Unfortunate. Oh, maybe they can get the kill? No. Suicide kill? <laughs> no, they didn't even explode. So there's a nasty bug, by the way, currently with Grenadiers. Their explosion is supposed to do 40 damage if they're if they're like uh, dying and the residual grenades just blow up. And there's like a 50 ch 50 percent chance of that happening. However, there is a bug currently that in that the against their own units they're using a different explosion type which does 400 instead of 40. So they are blowing up their own units willy-nilly, while at the same time um, only doing 40 damage to uh, to enemy infantry when blowing up. So we're having the both uh, rushing out the light vehicle and an enormous field presence for both as well. So this early infantry engagement is going to be decided by the light tank and the mobile flak. Whichever way it's going to go. Uh, the light tank needs to be caught off guard by rocket soldiers, but it also has a smaller line, uh, circle of line of sight than the flak. So that's a very interesting, that's always very interesting. Oh, he's going the worst way possible. That was just a wipe. And here we can have some more, yeah, that's Juicebox probably exerting some pressure here. He can now snipe this easily, even through the line of sight of the hospital. The hospital just doesn't have much vision range, look at this. The hospital doesn't have any windows, it seems like it's like a concrete bunker. Oh, what is he doing there? Ah, completely negating his advantage is what he's doing there. That was questionable at best by Juicebox. Probably he was trying to snipe the engineer, probably, but he could have easily done so coming in from the from the top side and just chipped away at the rifle infantry before that. That would have forced a response from Happy. Instead, uh, the field presence is even. All the pressure is out, and six harvesters for Juicebox over five from Happy. Both on service depot tech, so tier 1.5, the tier that most uh, most games tend to stay on. Because what else do you need other than infantry to do the damage and tanks to soak, soak the damage that is. And we're gonna have an MCV 430 MCV. That's a slightly late compared to compared to some other professional games. Sometimes you have a three minute 30 MCV, which Gatekeeper I think perfected. And he usually couples it with undeploying his original MCB after after building his service depot. 
and then just building the secondary MCV in his base. Or even double expanding and not having any backup MCV home. That's a risky strat, but it's worked countless times against countless players, including myself. And an immediate eco slide from Juicebox. Same here for Happy. I love seeing these. This has become the meta, it's become so standard. This is something that StarCraft used to do, where you immediately slide your probes or your drones or, or SCVs. Probes, wait, probes, SCVs, and what are the. Yeah, worker drones, right? Plus for Zerg. Anyway, haven't played StarCraft in a long, long time. Uh, because, yeah, red alert, <laughs> open array is uh, tangling me up. It's a great game, and I don't have that much time to play to begin with in the at the present time being. So again, a very tank heavy um, army of composition from Happy. And only two vehicles. Oh, can get some good crashes on the road. Not worth it. You got two. The corpse is decomposing in a matter of seconds. Maybe it's the snow. Maybe they're just uh, being snowed, snowed in or something. But this hut isn't being snowed in. What the hell? Hacks. I'm calling hacks here. Again, a huge infantry presence from Juicebox, and he's got the game sense to know that there is something in the bush, something's brewing, something's cooking. The army's out there. They are out there. And he's already deployed four flame towers. Flame towers are the new pillboxes. That's the double expand. Juicebox has done this with his regular MCV, so no cheese play from him here. Uh, same for Happy. Interesting, I usually see this the other way around, where players would just go for two MCVs and undeploy one at their will. But keep in mind, two, uh, three MCVs already give you a 15% production speed bonus, so that's pretty good. Army is being chased away, or the APC being chased away by the army. And this infantry blob is out of position. Oh lord, is this... Okay, if this kills the expansion outright, then I'm gonna call this. I'm gonna call the series, man. Ah, so many rocket soldiers getting chewed up by the infantry. Rifle infantry for the win. Remaining forces keep being tangled up on the hospital there. Ah, no crush to be had. I have a crush on you, states the APC. Ah, a retarget coming into the, uh, coming in from juice box, focusing onto the medium tank. That's some good micro there. And here comes the collapse, a huge army. Attack moves all the way across the board. And a Tesla coil in the back lines. Radar Dome providing some additional line of sight. This, uh, this engagement is gonna go no way other than choose boxes. Yep. There she goes. That's all she wrote there. Now we're gonna check the combat stats. And this is a slight advantage for choose box. What's the econ? Eh, still a slight. 4k lead. That's not something unsurmountable. Raider Dome for Happy as well, and he has powered it down. <laughs> Most, it's it's mostly a so scared move where you you build a Raider Dome, you you power it down to say to conserve power, and then in the late game you're floating 2,000 power and you still don't afford the 40. Uh, you're still too stingy to afford the 40 to power it up again. And a lot of vetted infantry. I like when uh, when you've got unit preservation, you can get blobs with insane veterancy. Base push coupled with a um, with some medium tanks, but there is a blob in the vicinity. Oh, the first shocky coming out! Ah, the attack, the attack like the sound went through, but not the animation, so no kill there. So that means he's on tier three. Wow, that's an incredibly early tier three. Let's check the econ. He's ahead in the econ, yeah. That's because Happy hasn't deployed a refinery. What? And Tesla coils are always going to have the range advantage. I would love for the Tesla coil to be walled off here. Like this, just a, a single tile of concrete would do, would do wonders here. Sorry, can't speak anymore, so much happening there. All right, so that's Happy's MCB being pushed back. And we're seeing the shock is approach. We're hearing them. It's more like it. Ah, yes. The shock packs, their shock backpacks or whatever they are. I don't think this is going to hold. Happy is going to have to move out again. Zap time. Fully charged. Shocking. <laughs> Good stuff. The artillery can't uh, can't stem the tide by itself. So Juicebox has gotten a glimpse there, and he's seen that there that this hasn't been taken yet. He's also got an engineer, by the way, so he knows that the ore field hasn't been taken. 
Oh, we've got the counter push. That's a, that's a sneaky, sneaky squad there. Has managed to find its way past the MCV and gonna take out the Econ. Immediate sell order. Very good. Choose box not screwing around. And the Shockies with their line of sight there can actually snipe this so easily. Mm. Two harvesters went down, a refiner went down. It's not a big deal, not that big a deal. When you're Soviets on tier 3 and your opponent hasn't taken his secondary expansion. What? He has probably? No. I thought he would have transferred all the harvesters away, but this harvester is just busy <laughs> mining the farthest patches he can find. Harvesters have a 15 cell um, scan range for ore, so I think that's just in the limits here. It's very inefficient, but not the fault of Happy. That's just the harvester AI. He's like, yeah, I still got some scraps there. <laughs> Oh, and I swear the next run he's gonna go over there and collect this one tile of ore. This is so, so bad. So the income should look a bit like this here. Yeah, big dip for both. And a base push. With flags, with shockies and a lot of heavy tanks to soak for, soak for the pillboxes. Oh yes. We're gonna have ourselves a barbecue here and the allies are not invited. What I would love is a single act. Tanya! Tanya spawned just in time. He's focusing her down. Yep, there she goes. One shot by the Tesla. Tesla packs there. The Tesla troopers are incredibly effective versus Tanya if they just can get in range. 1000% damage modifier. Ensures that Tanya is, um, yeah, is one shot. They're gonna kiss her goodbye. Kiss it goodbye. I'm sorry, Karigura, this is just not your game. Oh, the artillery shells are raining in though, so I would like to see at least a single flag a uh, single yak. Also, we've got the Iron Curtain, so... Oh, actually, he's trying to get into melee range, but he didn't find it. The hind was just on guard. Hind on guard duty there. And that's a big swing. Artilleries have hit the field. Hinds have hit the field. Pretty much means that... Choosebox has to go for broke, he has to go for the flak and flak and shocky composition. Pretty expensive to maintain. But that's ac actually fair enough if you're uh, if you've got the resources to mine from your opponent. He's hiding his army behind his well behind everything else. Behind his barracks. The four hundred dollar barracks spam I'm ah. Uh, let's hope that this gets fixed anytime anytime soon now. So, pushing choose box back a bit, but these artilleries are so exposed, I would love for a single yak. Please just build an orphan. Oh, ho, ho. no need for an airfield when you've got the four mobile flags on guard duty. Gonna run in, chase away all the artilleries. There is an AA gun popping, and it has been scouted. Oh, wow, Tani goes down again. Just heard her scream, the, the Wilhelm, female Wilhelm death scream. And the flags are diving after the artilleries. Keeping the artillery count low, it's probably the best he can do here. He could have retained the flags, but mm, probably worth it diving into diving into the base to get three artilleries for his trouble. He's lost the momentum, but on the bottom side there is a push. That that's just pure shock awesomeness. Shock and awe coming in there. Oh ho, ho. Zap time. Fully charged! There are the sh <laughs> That's pure shock spam. He doesn't even mix it in with other infantry. He doesn't mix it up. That's high risk, high reward. If they uh, manage to find their marks, they're gonna be super effective. But if they just get one shot by artilleries, it's uh, usually game. Or is one shock is surviving the hind onslaught there. Still, the tier 3 hasn't been scouted. I'm curious as to why he's been so. Uh, why Happy has been so passive with scout scouting there. Could easily go for some scouting runs. Hines out of ammo should actually rearm them stat because he needs them versus Shockies. And that's what I was talking about. That's 1200 lost just from a single artillery shell there. So there's a push and this time it's looking way better for Happy. He's got the artilleries. He's got line of sight support from the Hines. Yep. War trucks, is, war trucks are getting poked away by the shock trooper over the cliff. The Iron Curtain is 
very close to coming up again. It's probably less than 15 seconds. He's going into position. He's doing it. Behind has scouted it, but no cigar. That's a five stack that's probably going to go right now. Yep, Tanya is in the front. She's in the mix, but she's gonna get flacked. She's gonna get flacked by five flags. Tanya just straight up got flacked. Flacked. Yeah, kind of works. And in comes the cleanup crew. Pushing away. Ah, oh, that's so good. The Iron Curtain flag trucks pushing away the army, pushing them around. Meanwhile, the Shockers can go to town. He's chosen just the, the right vector of approach there. We're having a base push, but not much. Not much to support the base push here. The Tesla coil is going to deter anything that comes too close. Ah, yep. It's got another sap here. And that's a lot of flag tracks closing in. Closing the gap here. Tch, that's what? Ten flags. Oh, I've, it's been a while since I've seen ten flags in use there. But they're too soft of a, of a target. They're not really good for tanking. As you can see, the pillbox shredding through them now. And all of them on low health. They're tackling the medium tank with support from the Shockies. The backline Shockies can get them. Oh! There goes another high, unfortunately not crashing onto the artillery. In the middle. Yeah, finally we're seeing a Yak transition. And got its money's worth. Got artilleries, got a couple rocket soldiers, and even got a couple assets in the crash as well. Crash landing. Mm, lots of low flags. Is it worth it repairing them? Usually yes. Tanya's back on the field. She's not had a good game so far. This Tanya has had zero impact. Uh, she's been rebuilt three times and she's been sniped every single time. Okay, a flak deterring the uh, the via uh, the yak from going into the tech center. There's another yak attack plane. It's probably going to try and snipe Tanya with the light of sight advantage. That can actually happen. All right, he's going back into position, and there's the army coming in. This is probably oh, yeah, he got it just in time. Misclicked a bit. Tanya immediately dying again. The Shockies are just savaging this infantry blob. Holy shit, this is so well played. Tanya didn't have a chance to get off a single shot in this game so far. Has she even killed anything? I don't think she has. That's how you deal with Tanya. She's been rebuilt immediately. Uh, where though? There's a longbow as well. There she is. Tanya and the longbow, but so many flak trucks, you don't want to go into this. What is the longbow doing? Jeez. Jeez Louise. That was close. You don't want to lose longbows. 2,000 of an in, uh, the investment is huge. And against this composition, the longbow is practically and factically, factually worthless. It can't snipe mobile flags because they're, they have too good of an anti-air gun. And it can't snipe shock troopers because the shockies are just infantry. And uh, the longbow is a glorified armor hunter. It doesn't do anything here. Ah, oh, he's going into time. What? He mistargeted the billbox. What the hell? Okay, he's going for another run there. Oh, and he got Tanya again. That's beautifully played. The Yak attack plane gets out scot free. Beautiful stuff there. Not a single shot has been fired by, by a Tanya in this game altogether. I don't think so. I've never heard her fire. The MCB is redeploying here. The spacing is so good from Juicebox. He's now free to take the natural expansion off Happy. And it's looking pretty good for him. If he doesn't lose his entire blob to Shock Troopers, but he's too good to fall for that. And 4v2s coming in. The GPS satellite is going up though. Is it gonna be a big swing here? Is the GPS satellite gonna change the game? Maybe. Oh, mobile flags going back in. Probably sniping the artillery. He should snipe the longbows as well. That's an attack move. There we go, the shockies. And the mobile flags are finding their mark. Oh yes. The zapping. There she goes. The Raider Dome should be tackled next. The longbow is going back in. Longbow down. And actually, Juicebox has done the damage. Completely the right decision pulling back here. That is a 
absolutely marvelous decision. And meanwhile, the V2s have actually found the snipe on the Conyard. Wow, that was just a diversion. The Conyard is sniped, so no more reinforcements here. He could go for a scouting run, maybe. He's got lots of yaks. Five yaks are enough to burst the Conyard. In comes the spy plane. Oh no! <laughs> Random five stack of rifle infantry. Casually killing this here. The AA gun is really low. I think if the V2 comes in, there is another V2 somewhere, yeah? If the V2 comes in and snipes, snipes the AA gun, then the Yaks can go to town. And this is looking so good here for Juicebox. This is an absolutely different game from what we've seen in game 1 and 2. If he doesn't lose it to the GPS satellite, then he's gonna be golden. Yep, GPS is up. And Happy just happy, pretty unhappy about the results here. He sees that there is nothing he can really engage into. Yeah, this, uh, that's it. The V2 was sniping the anti-air gun. And now the Yaks are going to town. Going to kill probably the power as well, yeah. Going for the power snipes. Going for all the damage they can find onto the base here. Because there's nothing to reinforce. Beautiful play, beautiful play. I am absolutely in love with this series so far. I am 100% uh, content with... Uh, I got my money's worth. Alright, let's go to snipe on one artillery. The rocket soldiers, power drop now coming with veterancy. Order your power drop now and get veterancy for free. Veterancy 1 included. Oh, another push. Mobile flags going in, finding the artilleries. No shockies though. This time it was just a, an Iron Curtain to buy time. Where's Tanya? Oh, and that's an ore truck tanking! The ore truck, beautiful play. Tanking here and probably disposing of the entire blob. Should get the snipe on the refinery before he falls. Yes, sir! Refinery down. One or two tanks are gonna go fall prey here as well. Wow, so many... Oh, so many units falling here. What a good play from, from Juicebox. Just letting them sit there. It's exactly what he needed. Okay, now we're gonna locate Tanya. Huh. She must have been sniped again. Jesus! Tanya not having the best game here. I've not seen Tanya fire a single shot still. Oh! Getting an ore truck there. So many excess ore trucks, but not many ore patches to mine from for Happy. This is such a good game from Juicebox. I'm loving it. He's now going in. He knows that there is not much anti-air. Except a couple stray rocket soldiers and he's sniping those as well. Now he's going for the pillbox. He's going for damage on anything he can find really. And those two rockets, uh, rocket soldier and rifle infantry tag team are still at it. Outside of pillbox range, just barely. Uh, finally Happy has found the courage and strength to muster. Oh! <laughs> The flame tower. Artilleries are not meant to uh, to work in your opponent's base and face. As you've seen there, two artilleries for the price of one flame tower. That's pretty good. And... Ah, oh, this V2 has survived as well. It's killed so much. It's on vet one only. What? Let's random force fire. And in comes the Iron Curtain on a single flag track. Probably just to buy time for the shock club again. He doesn't need to go all in, he just needs to snipe all the artilleries. Juicebox knows he's got the time, he scouted the base. There he goes, that's the right target. And moving out again, scot free, that's how you get your value of 2000 for the low low price of an iron curtain that is gonna recharge in two minutes. Uh, transition over to V2s, so I think he just wants to bust the defensive lines here. And the GPS satellite is just not doing anything. Unless he can land those money shots, but he needs an AA gun to protect this. That's his only artillery at the time being. I'm just not seeing it. I'm not seeing the, the comeback condition here. Five yaks, enough to bust the conyard. Six? I stand corrected, it's six yaks. Tanya's back at it, and she's not gonna have a very long lifespan there. This has been a bad, bad game for Tanya's. He's diving in? No, no. Just content sniping the refinery. Where's Tiny gonna go? Probably into a pillbox to deny the snipes. I would actually send her into a pillbox, but then again, the Sharkies can just obliterate pillboxes so quickly. Flame tower in melee range. Good stuff, good stuff. 
what a well and met methodically played game by Choosebox so far. Absolutely stoked here. Now he's gonna take apart the defensive lines here. Nothing that Happy can do, his best bet will be selling out. So many shocks. Oh, shock and awe. I'm loving it. Pew. Pew. The Yak providing so much line of sight. Here's another... No, that's just a flame tower. <laughs> I, I thought that was another MCV. Also, Choosebox is having control of the middle gems and the ore. Uh, and the, the gem mine there. Which is pretty good for him. Because that means he's going to have a lot more uh, lifetime earnings than Happy. Those V2s, there's just nothing to stop them. Happy doesn't have the cash to go for Heinz. And also he knows that there are like 20 or something flax around. So it's just not ha not happening for him. The V2s, what are they going for? He's pulling the V2s here. Wait. Is he gonna go for a tech snipe? He could actually do that. But I would rather, much rather have the mobile flax in the front lines and kill all the artillery. So the threat has been dealt with and then let the shockers move in. Yeah, that's a five stack of V2 rockets. Oh my lord, he's just built a missile silo. So Happy is just putting all his eggs in one basket there. What's gonna happen here? He's gonna target the conyard, isn't he? Yeah, that's the conyard. Oh, undeploying, running away. And there is nothing that Juicebox got from this. Iron Curtain wearing off. It's a, uh, wow, five V2s going down with almost next next to no uh, payoff. Huh. That was probably not game changing though, because you can still just wait for the next curtain. Oh, and now the artilleries are going to rain doom. Oh, finally time to get a couple shots off. I'm going to ke keep track of the numbers. So far she's killed three shock troopers. That's exactly as much as she costs. So this is the first Tanya that has been um, cost neutral at least. Not cost effective yet. If she fires another shot, she's gonna be cost effective. Alright, five artilleries for Happy. I just don't see it going anywhere. Now this should be an easy snipe here by the way. And then Choosebox can also reclaim the, the base here. And be in a golden position. And as soon as all those flame towers are falling, there are just no more targets for the artilleries. They have to come out further and thus risk uh, being prone to snipes. Also, I would love to see uh, the Autrex getting sniped by Meeks. But Yaks are fine as well. Oh, that's exactly what I was talking about. Going in. What is he doing? The hell, he's sniping the service team. That's so expensive. Such an expensive snipe. Tanya's still there. Okay. She's still, she's still at it. So she's killed like three more rifle infantry. Probably not. Oh, move her. Move her. Probably not what you want out of Tanya. Ah, the pure shock and awe. I don't see a single rifleman or rocket soldier. Oh, wow! Happy has managed to find it in him to bust out a Chinook and capture the ore refinery there. He's gonna go on a capturing spree. Oh, the mammoth are gonna seal the deal. Mammoth tanks. We're gonna check uh, check back on the, on the expansion of Happy in a bit. On the capturing events there. Capturing my heart. Oh, the mammoth tank. Now there is so much DPS in this blob. This is probably a wipe on the main base. And the Mammoth Tank is a good enough frontliner opposed to the Mobile Flax, as you can see here. Mammoth Tank is the frontliner we wanted, but not the one we deserve. Wow! Couple... That's a couple of uh, captures already. The Nuke Silo is not gonna see much action though. It's gonna go down <laughs> in a flurry of, of lightning bolts there. So this is pretty much all she wrote. Happy has been busted there. Choose box. Uh, squeezing enough choose out of his box there. To pop Happy. But the capturing endeavor. It's been successful. He has managed to capture himself a war factory. Nice. It's a little bit of vindication there. He hasn't lost with, uh, with no resistance, you know. He's not going down easily. Alright, that's it. That's it for this blob here. <laughs> Happy on the war factory. But he doesn't have any eco anymore. So how much cash does he have left? 3k. He can still spend 3.4k. Before he actually goes out of the game. Ah! The ultra cask. Blocking the crushes here. 
giving a safety net to the rocket soldiers. And finally, the engineer should get sniped. Allahu Yak. Oh! That was a good crash. Fantastic crash, actually. Crash landing. Uh, that's just Juicebox A moving his yaks. He doesn't need to be cost effective anymore. Let's face it. He has got. Like, and he deserves taking this game. Wow! The, I didn't know that the rocket sol soldier track shots versus air don't hit yak attack planes when they're landing or aircraft in general. Anyway, that was a fantastically well played game here by Juicebox, showing the true power of Soviet tier 3, Russian tier 3 that is, the pure shocks, uh, uh, shocks and mobile flag composition working out just nicely, uh, the Iron Curtain doing wonders and miracles here and even the GPS from Happy was not enough to stem the tide. So that's half an hour deep already and we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna flick the scoreboard up a notch. This is a 2-1 here and we're gonna go into game 4. Battle control terminated. Battle control initialized. And we've got game 4 at our hands and this could already be the match point. If Juicebox doesn't hold on then Happy is gonna take the series. But if Juicebox manages to crank it up a notch and go to for a 2-2, then we're gonna have our final match. This would be awesome. There are re there are five replays, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there is gonna be uh, that there's gonna be a victor after this game already, because or that there's gonna be a 2-2 necessarily, because um, they agreed on playing five games regardless, I believe. So regardless of the outcome of this match here, this is Winter Storm, easy to get locked out on. That's a map where you actually have to bring the house keys in order to not get locked out. A bit of a tricky one, if you're asking me. I played it versus Barf, and what he did is just plonk down an MCV here, plonk down an MCV there, and I was fucked. Because I was on tier 2 as well as him, and I only had 4 ore patches, and he, uh, he had uh, 6. Yep, that's the story of the Red Alert Global League game versus him. Didn't bode too well. And we're gonna have Happy as the Brits again. Yeah, let's talk about the factions. And Choosebox as Russia again. So we're seeing them both in their most comfortable factions. Happy, probably, presumably a patriot. I'm not, not sure about that. Can he even, even be, uh, still be a British patriot after what happened, what was going down recently? Ah, just kidding. And probably a double ref opener for both. Anything else would surprise me at this point. Yeah, immediate sellout as well, getting a couple technicians. I love the technicians. Flailing their arms about. Look at the, the walk animation. Ah! They're walking as if they were like a running from a zombie apocalypse. And while simultaneously having crapped their pants. And they're all redheads, by the way. So yeah, there's that. Quiet early game again. Uh, I've never seen any of these players go for an early all-in rush. That's uh, and that's the first time we're see we're seeing a switch up from Juicebox. He has rushed out a a mobile flag, so he has not gone for a double ref. That's the first first opener in this game that was uh, in this series that was not a double ref opener. Good stuff. I commend Juicebox for his creative thinking there. Creative man, uh, and he's on three halves just to boot. So you can see here that this actually allows for smoother scaling. The War Factory opener is, um, if you're rushing out the light vehicle and then immediately going for harvesters, you're still gonna have more harvesters than someone who went for a double ref. Granted, uh, the, the trade-off is that the one who went for the double ref is gonna have a massive field presence, as we can see here. But if you can make your flag truck work, yep, that flag truck has paid for itself. 7 over nil, 700. And maybe can get a Ranger as well, if he's lucky enough, or if he's uh, good enough with his A-move micro. Because you always have to um, A-move the flag truck so it acquires a target, but then move back so you kite. So it's pretty APM intensive if you want to make the flag trucks work. And in comes the light tank. That's... Oh, that's so nice! Happy is abusing a glitch there. So uh, the turret of the light tank was primed onto its target, so he knows that this, uh, that this flag truck is hiding, hiding out there in the corner. Thus evening up the score. Six, seven over six. And he's a ranger by happy as well. So the ranger and light tank one two punch combo. With a lot of infantry to back it up. I'm loving it. This is a pretty deadly composition. Met with a heavy eco build though. 
5 harvesters and probably an MCV shortly. And the MCV has arrived, that's a 3 minute, uh, like 4 minute MCV, very early. And this is gonna allow um, Juicebox to hunker down and get the advantage in... Wow, well, he's just now taking his oils. So this is an, a straight up MCV rush which allows him to gain more control. What he's gonna do probably is pop down a refinery here and then place his, um, redeploy his MCV somewhere around here to ensure he doesn't get locked out. Because that's the biggest danger on this map. You actually either want to have a huge field presence or you want to have your, uh, your MCV rushed out immediately. Otherwise you have to rely on cheesy strats such as getting up, getting up a wharf or getting up a naval pen and rushing, rushing a transport. The transport boat is then going to go over there and camp out, but it's yeah, it's a bit risky. Eco slide happening and nothing else so far. Pretty quiet early game. Yeah, I've, I've said this like the fourth time now. Both of these are just not known for heavy early game aggression. Just not the way they roll here. They seem rolling. They hate and the ranger is giving so much line of sight. Ah, I love it. This is a, the lockdown strategy come into fruition here. He's probably going to move his first MCV or expansion MCV. Yep, just after popping an ore refinery, he's hunkering down here. But a moment of unattentiveness. Oh, and the APC? No, not gonna get any crushes done. So vehicle for vehicle. Hmm. Probably favoring, favoring happy because the light tank is a bit cheaper. First medium tank arriving, and this is exactly what we're talking about. So now Choosebox says he didn't undeploy. I, if I were Choosebox, I would actually have redeployed here. Maybe here to get a base push starting. But yeah, it's up to preference, and he's immediately moving over there, recognizing that there is not enough of an army. The collapse from Choosebox, though. Oh, and the APC! The, uh, all the infantry are move command, so the APC can get some sick crushes in there. More and more crushes. This APC has paid off. <laughs> Corpse is plastering its path. One, two, three, like 14, 15 infantry getting crushed by this APC. That was a mad play there. Oh, the Ranger trying to block deployment. No, sir. And a second war factory. Wow. That's a second war factory rush. I have not seen this in forever. But that means that the heavy tanks are gonna come in from here. This is so good here for uh, for Juicebox. What a smart move. Instead of just crawling his uh, heavy tanks across the map, he's immediately redeplo um, redeployed his supply lines. And he's gonna have frontline supply lines there. This is so smart. I'm loving what he's doing there. Oh, taking two flamer blasts to the face. This MCV is dead. This is already looking good for, for Juicebox. We are probably going to see a game five, ladies and gentlemen. I'm loving it. I am hyped. This is a great game so far. Now let's let's just look at the time. And if this doesn't exceed 40 minutes or 35 minutes, then I'm going to um, cast this separately. I'm not gonna cast this separately. But let's see where this is going. I think the assets, mm -hmm, 46 over 31 and 20 over 11k kills. Very, very decisive can even tackle the main base here. Choosebox does have it in him to just go into the main yard, main construction yard, into the main base. Didn't, almost didn't lose anything. Lost an APC, lost one rifle infantry. That's pretty good. Good unit conservation. He, he knows when he has to pull out. He knows when he, can't, when he can and can't play aggressively. And that was one of those can moments. Closely followed by a can't moment because the entire army was collapsing. But really good situational gameplay, really good awareness by Juicebox here. Uh, heavy tank probably going down. Still absolutely favoring Juicebox here at this at this present time. He can go into the Elderix, snipe the Elderix and also deploy the MCV again. This is um, not, an, not a direct base push scenario like Omnon. He's rather just having it as a backup. And I love what he's doing here. What Juicebox is doing here is always just bringing his MCV along, just to pop a flame tower and the barracks. Gonna narrow down the space and also allow for frontline infantry production. Good shit right there. The ore refinery is completely unprotected. 
Rexy, man. He has gotten a raid at Dome out, but he doesn't have the forward. Uh, now, now here, a forward uh, War Factory would come in handy for Happy, but he doesn't have that. That's a privilege of Juicebox here, who is also enjoying 15% faster production speed and probably can snipe the Raider Dome willy nilly here. Oh, Happy is not gonna be too pleased with what he's. Uh, with the shape of things to come here. Nice, the heavy tanks going in and immediately squashing half of the infantry. Now we're gonna have the Raider Dome going down. It. Yeah. Good stuff, Raider Dome going down, ore trucks in peril, and the refinery has been sw uh, sniped as well. Here is a second push. Unfortunately, the infantry was just, were just being idle. That was a bit of a blunder. But hey, he's pulling out in time, he's recognizing it. Here is an offensive forward Raider Dome. What? What? Alright, that's almost as good as the offensive nuke. Offensive Raider Dome, I give it a... On the offensiveness scale, I give it a... 6 out of 10. That's pretty offensive. Not the most offensive thing though. Ooh, and one thing that the uh, that the flame towers do have over the pillboxes it, is that they do mad damage to, to heavy armor. Do you see how much damage is coming in into this construction yard? The flame tower! Oh! If he could have gotten another shot off the MC we would have been toast there. Juicebox needs to redeploy his own MCV, scattering for, uh, the scatter from the artillery is luckily not enough to take it down. And this conyard is so low. Big deal though, because now he can reinforce here. And this allows for him to stall until uh, until he gets his, uh, his refinery back there. Oh, good shots from the artillery. The rate of fire from the artillery is giving, giving Juicebox a headache here. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, now he can reinforce. So this is basically maybe a comeback. He needs this expansion though. He definitely, desperately needs a refinery here. Even if it's long distance mining, that's completely fine. The Raider Dome for Juice Box is being tackled. And there's nothing you can do about it. Oh, maybe pop a flame tower in this place. He has a Tesla coil, but not before the Raider Dome does go down. Finds its mark there. That was probably worth it. Yeah, popping the Tesla coil was absolutely fine. Ah, uh, and this MCV escaping with a sliver of health is gonna give the happy at least the illusion of having a chance. What? Tier 3 already? We are seeing the shockies once again. Shock blobs are gonna come in hot. Uh, better relegate your rally point, my friend, otherwise you're gonna get chewed up by the pillbox, though. Short moment of power down, a short lapse here. Uh, relegate your relic point, please. Yeah, now he did it. Whenever it says primary, you know that someone has relegated the relic points. And we're gonna see V2 transition as well. V2s and flax. This looks uh, starting to look a lot like the, la the last game. He could one-shot snipe the construction yard as well. It's still in the range of, uh, of the V2 and it could get sniped in this health range. Not anymore now, maybe. Okay, pillbox is finally being disposed of. Now this is transitioning into more static game. We're gonna have an entire army, but there are shocks! Ooh, the shocks are running into pillboxes though. So that's bad. Now there's only mobile flax and shocks left. The Tesla coil on its own is not gonna be good enough to deter the push here. Uh, two flame towers. Don't know. Gonna take their time, not gonna cut the mustard tier versus the medium tanks. So this may be... Uh, yeah, Happy may have a shot here at busting through. There he goes. The flame towers are doing so much AoE damage though. And the V2, if it's a good V2 shot, wow! This has chunked the entire blob out and only one rocket soldier remaining, now going down as well. Oh, the MCV is so close to the flak trucks, but it has managed to deploy. Find the deployment here. Find a nice zone of deployment and three shockies. Not enough to bust. Ooh, the V2. Happy knows he can't fight around the V2. And that's why he's why he has to constantly move back. Forces him into a more passive playstyle and makes him lose ground. More and more and more ground. Look at this. He's now confined. He at least has gotten the expansion out. But 
Happy is not in a commanding position. Happy is being pummeled from all sides. Juicebox trying to find a flank. Going for the pillbox there. That's good enough. And here, he's moving into a V2. This V2 can snipe so much. It can change the pace of the game here. Oh, unless it just goes for a scouting run. No, not like this. It survived. It survived. That's actually... Okay, now let's look at how this fares. This might actually be a big deal. This might be a big deal there. Do we have... Yeah, we've got the Iron Curtain as well. As soon as the power's up, the Iron Curtain is going to start ticking down and that's going to seal the deal here. Celio the dealio. I would love for a backline cap. Oh, he just moved the engineer, just was about to say. That was the shot from the V2. See, just because the V2 survived, it did so much work there. Killed half an army. We're gonna have the engineer moving out. Hopefully it's gonna capture something. Could go for the refinery and the radar dome, but there is a defensive rifle infantry. Eh, defensive artillery, no. It's not happening. That's okay, that's okay. That's a bad rally point. Whenever you see you're losing an engagement, don't pump infantry from that barracks anymore. Zap time! Oh, the buff. The buffed um, flame tower profile, where they're actually really good versus uh, at dishing out AoE damage now. It's so good. I'm loving it. Oh, and the engineer is probably gonna get a capture off. This is the second game in a row where backline, sneaky backline captures have played a role. One of the artilleries is, uh, has been found by the, by the flak trucks, sniffed out there. Artillery is missing the mark. Ah, oh, he's onto it. Well, that was super close. That was half a second away. And the GG being called. Yeah, her juice box has been pulling him apart by the joints there. Ah, oh, what a game. This is another game on a small map with, with low eco, mind you, where he's managed to squeeze out tier 3 as Russia. And uh, so far, I'm really impressed with Juicebox's Russia game. He has, um, yeah, he's showed the allies their limits. Uh, Happy is pretty much at the same skill level, but he couldn't deal with the Shockies two times in a row now. So that makes it, it a 2-2, and I'm looking at the timer and realizing we're already on like 45 minutes. I'm so sorry, I have to delay this for another week. We're gonna postpone the, uh, the closure um, for another week. Unfortunately, but also <laughs> add revenue, which I'm never gonna get because I'm not actually monetizing my videos. So, <laughs> uh, I hope you're as hyped as, as I am about this series. This has been so far one of the best series I've casted in ever. The scoreboard spells out a 2 2 now, and fantastic play with the shocks, with the flag trucks. Let's see, how is uh, Happy gonna answer this in game 5? Is he gonna go for, uh, for Brits again? By the way, face transports were an option. But he never found the cash to to just go for tier 3. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time with the conclusion. An epic conclusion. Five aces out. Battle control terminated.